So it's just recognizing when you're turning to yourself to help you get from a bitter place to a better place, what calming techniques can you use to help reconnect yourself to your body, to your mind, to your emotions, to your spirit, and allowing your sensations to guide you for what you need to do for self-care. Hello, and welcome to the Constance Mesmer podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh my gosh, I just can't get enough of love, 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 love. I'm going to do a little bit more about love and heartache and, you know, just kind of caring for yourself when things hit you. So that's what we're going to discuss because I'm thinking I'm talking and you guys are pondering. So in a way, because I'm psychic and Claire Ponce is working, I'm picking up your thoughts and re responding. So it is a discussion. <laughs> How's that? Anyway, I hope you get a lot from today's session, or at least a little anyway. So I was looking at my astrology for the up and coming year. I got an astrology read and I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> this is great. You know, Pluto's in Aquarius, Sol is murky. And she said, there's going to be, you know, challenges and opportunities. And this is exactly what life is, right? Always a few challenges, if also opportunities, if you look at it in that way. Like, okay, opportunity for growth, change, transformation. You know, and all of this is how can we, how can you, how can I manage each of these transitions that occur in our life? Because it's rarely smooth, right? It's just, just rarely smooth. There's always little bumps or <laughs> issues along the way. What comes to mind for me is that lovely saying, challenges can make us bitter or they can make us better, Right. So it really is opportunity when we hit something and come up against something. Like, how do I want to respond here? Remember last time we met, I was saying, it really, I know it's sometimes natural to have a visceral reaction, which is solar plexus chakra that gets our triggers are all there because our personal power and our self-esteem is all like <sighs> wrapped up in there. But it really is more, <laughs> it's beneficial if we do our best to move it into the heart chakra where we can respond to each of these situations. You know, when things are out of our control and are not happening as smoothly or as quick, for me, it's like things don't happen fast enough. I'm like, come on, come on, manifest, manifest. <laughs> I remember a lifetime off planet where I would just think it and it came and appeared before me. Where is that now? And, and Earth, we can't really do that. We have to kind of have things in play. And like I said also to you before, spirit is involved in the co-creation. And sometimes it's really about a, a joyous of, uh, you know, being aware of the unfolding as it things come to us, things that we work at. And, and it is that realization is that, you know, we do have to put forth effort. We have to take our dreams, turn them into goals, make the steps along the goals, whatever's necessary. Some things happen instantaneously, other things take time. And some of that, you know, can be a challenge. People can be challenges in our life. They might have a different agenda. There might be squabbles, whether in the home, outside the home, in the workplace, in the personal life, in the world, in the, you know, not shared values when it comes to, I don't know, society, politics, environmental concerns, all that. So challenges are, you know, they come up and, and maybe you're looking at some right now in your life. And I just wanted to remind you some you know, kind of SOS <laughs> opportunities that you might want to consider. True confession, you know, there have been times in my life when I've been stuck in a slump and challenges made me bitter, like bitter. And then I was like recognizing, you know, the conscious mind was witness self looking, going, wow, check you out, Constance, you are stuck. And I had to <laughs> kind of pull myself up and recognize this is a choice. You know, this bitterness 
I don't have to be stuck here or this angst or this aggro aggravation. I don't have to be stuck here. I can take this as an opportunity to, you know, better myself, better my potential, better my interaction, all sorts of better, better, better. (laughs) And so I just want to ask you when something troubling comes up for you, how do you cope with it? That's a question. (laughs) That's a real question. You know, when something troubling comes up, how do you cope with it? And you know me, it's always like, let me illustrate with a personal story. How gag, listen, you know me. There's been times in my life when I'm like, oh, self-soothe with food. (laughs) Here, have this. You don't feel good, have this. But I'm, you know, I'm working through that still. And so, you know, sometimes it's about taking the time to walk it out and talk it out. You know, I've told you that. That's always a good thing to look within. Anyway, I just want you to ponder, you know, what do you do to cope? How do you cope when things are troubling you? I also want you to ponder, how do you come up with the right solution for you? How do you come up with the right answer for you? Right? When things are tricky or tough or not going the right way, how do you come up with the right solution for you? I used to teach kids like spiritual direction and I said to them, listen, (laughs) okay, listen, you're going to be like, oh, I know what she's talking about. A lot of middle school kids. So I was like, listen, if you don't want to, you know, get really intimate with your boyfriend or girlfriend and they're kind of pushing you, I want you to come up with an answer. Like a, you need to be prepared with the right answer so that you can maintain your power and have it like on board. So the same, I think is true here. Like sometimes I think we need to have these resources, tools, and skills at the ready for when we need them. Because sometimes when we're thrown into the turmoil, (laughs) spirit says, or the cesspool of troubling issues. Yeah, that's so true, spirit. That we need to have some, you know, things at the ready in our toolkit to have. So I just ask you, How do you come to the right solution for you when you're problem solving or dealing with a difficult situation? Now, in that, I invite you to ponder your internal and your external resources, right? Like initially, initially, when something you know, when you're paying attention, remember when I was about clear sensation and these, or even physical sensations, you're, something happens and it triggers you and you you know, you just feel a physical hit to the stomach or your heart starts racing or you get really heated, literally like heated, or you feel prickly aches in your body or just like I get like inflamed, literally. (laughs) I think I'm sure my face turns red, but I like, it hits my whole body, right? And I just feel it. So the first thing again, is when you turn to yourself to use your calming techniques, it's really about noticing, first of all, that you're getting triggered or something is happening to you. And then how you might want to calm yourself down, what you can do internally, like with your own mind chatter, or how can you take care of yourself in that moment to just get to a baseline of calm instead of reactionary or instead of, you know, heart heading down the road of bitter (laughs) instead of better. So just the reminder then that sometimes, remember, I always say awareness, breath, care, awareness that something's triggered you, breath, like taking a nice, deep, relaxing breath to kind of come to a calm space so that you might recognize just like body physical relaxation, breathing, and noticing, you know, because you've noticed any inner sensations, the muscle, the gut punch, the muscle tension, you know, the breathing shallow, you know, the self-observation bit, right? So you're 
working even with soul awareness, psychic awareness stuff. That's why I'm teaching you this stuff is because you could also have deeper self-observation. So you've noticed this. Now you're taking breaths, calming, relaxing breaths, trying to release the muscle tension, trying to breathe more solidly so it's not just shallow. And you're working with yourself with now your self-observation to say, care. What do I need to do right now? What do I need mentally, emotionally, physically, or spiritually for myself right now? If this is just you trying to work this out on your own, because this is what I'm talking about, because we work in different ways, right? So if you're just trying on your own, just recognizing where your mind is and where your thoughts are and how they're racing and what you might need to do to just, instead of you know, sometimes people run and get ahead of themselves and worry, worry, worry. So their mental thoughts drive them crazy in a moment of trigger. And so just kind of noticing the thought and recognizing, okay, this is just a thought. It's maybe reality, maybe not reality. And, you know, how can I move to a place of like, I'm just going to breathe. What do I need to do right now? You know, and just recognizing on your emotional state, what do you need to do for your emotional state? Are you feeling fear or rage or helplessness or sad or overwhelm or lonely? You know, what do you need to do in this moment to help your emotional experience be more at ease? You know, if that's the goal, right? If that's the goal. And then also physical. So what do you need to do physically? Do you need to express exertion? <laughs> spirits like, you know, you know, there's some people that punch a pillow, but that's not what spirit's saying. Do you need to punch something? You know, because some people that's like they put on their boxing gloves and go punch a punching bag to get it out. I'm more of a, let me go for a walk. I've got to go for a walk. Some people are, let's go for a run. You know, I just need to move my body because as an empath, it hits me and then it triggers me and it fuels me. And then I'm like, oh, this is not healthy, irritable sensations. And inside me, I need to dispel this. I need to get it out, you know, cleanse and clear, cleanse and clear, white light, everything. <laughs> and that would be soulfully or energetically or spiritually. This is what I need to do is wash myself with light, be like, okay, I'm being triggered because they said something or somebody did something and I'm in a rage. Like, what do I need to do to release this, to come back to my calm center, to make a solid decision to go forward? So it's just recognizing when you're turning to yourself to help you get from a bitter place to a better place, what calming techniques can you use to help reconnect yourself to your body, to your mind, to your emotions, to your spirit? and allowing your sensations to guide you for what you need to do for self-care, right? This is just you getting to like a point of stillness where then you can actually respond or take action or whatever it is in that moment. And again, still continuing on by just working with yourself, turning to you, if that's your how you want to calm yourself down, is just turning to yourself. You're going to notice like what needs to change or what do you need to do for self-care in this moment? So the next step after you like calm down is what's going on for me? You know, what's, what's being triggered or what's happening or what is this bringing up for me? Or why did I get so out of shape with whatever was said or done or what's happening in the world or whatever? Where's that what's that really about? And you know me, I'd write it out. Usually if it's something that's like making me bitter for a while, I'd be like, oh, I got to write this out because this thing is repeating. This is happening more than once. So it must be a lesson in the cosmos coming at me here with, you know, repetitive nature. And so sometimes it's communicating or talking it through yourself. Again, it's because it brings up the subconscious content material. So sometimes I go for a good walk and talk it out in my mind, or I write it out. And I notice then for myself, what do I need to do to change for self-care? So sometimes it means maybe I need to stand up for myself. Maybe somebody made a cutting comment and I just let it wash right over me. And I, you know, because when I do reads, I see what the good in people, like I have to pull back and go, okay, this is what's blocking you from being your magnanimous self. I have to see the ugly, like I have to make a point to try to see the ugly. Otherwise I just see the light and I just see like the goodness and this is what you are, this is what you come to do. These are gifts and talents, rah, 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 or whatever. 
but I have to pull back and see the ugly. So sometimes I have to do that for myself is pull back and go, okay, now that you've had time to breathe, now that you've had time to center yourself, what is happening that got you so riled? Like now I can be more clear headed and calm to realize the truth of the scenario and really go deep with my own truth, right? Because sometimes if it's a simple matter, then it's it's one thing. But if it's an, an engrossing matter or a big scale thing that's happening, I have to take an overarching look at life and my own happiness. And I want to look at my truths so that I can deal with reality and what next steps need to happen, right? So this is if it's a big something that's got me bitter or a small something that's got me bitter. Like just, is it quick resolve, something easy peasy, or is it like this huge thing that I need to look at in my life that I've like done some self-betrayal or whatever, you know, that's like might take some serious looking. Hey, I want to tell you about my book, Some Dogs Talk. I wrote this book to teach animal communication among the pages of non-creepy paranormal realistic fiction. And because of the content and delivery, it is equally appealing to a wide age group. I think you'll find it fun to explore and actually probably maybe see yourself in the pages. Get your copy today. So when it takes deeper, bigger looking, broader looking, my repertoire or my toolkit, up until this point, I've been telling you, when I turn to myself, this is how Constance would take care of this. And I invite you to maybe consider if that is something helpful to you, is how can you take care of yourself when and calm yourself down and cope with things that are going on when things are tricky, when you turn to you. The next thing I do, if I can't sort it on my own, I often very quickly turn to spirit. I turn to spirit guides, I turn to God, and I... <laughs> And I'm like, what the heck is going on, right? And I have to still make sure that my heart is open. And so I go into a meditative state, or maybe I'll walk and talk with spirit with the intention of saying, God, remember intentions, everything in the work, God, I really need guidance on this, or my angels or guides, depending upon what the issue is. And I'll get more into that when I talk to you about communicating with guides and angels and loved ones on the other side or God. But it really is about who do I want to go to that would be a kind of a master in the field of the trouble that I'm facing. And then I open up for guidance. And by that, I just mean I open my heart mind to the truth and the awareness that's going to come through. I'll teach you discernment even later, more so about really turning and then saying, okay, give me the signs that it's really you, that this is really for my highest good. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm a schmuck, a schmo, what is, you know, I hope that's not a bad word, but when I'm a pots, is that a bad word? When I'm a real <laughs> goof and I need to kind of step up my game or be better in my world with myself and I have lessons to learn, I don't always want to hear what spirit has to say. It's not that it's condescending, but it definitely can be truth awakening. And it's hard, right? When I hear, oh, you're judgmental or, oh, you're too hard on them or, oh, you could have been kinder or, oh, you know, you got to look at this or that, you know, that's growth. And that's usually like, oh, crap, Constance, that's definitely not coming from your self because yourself would be like, oh, you're doing fine. It's all them. <laughs> it's never all them. It's never all them. Like a lot of times it's a mirror, right? They're a mirror to help us grow or whatever. And sometimes we have to check ourselves. Where, where, where's my fault in the interaction or how can I improve? And sometimes it is fully, you know, golly, it's a lot them and little me or vice versa or whatever. I have no qualms of going back and apologizing. So anyway, I turned to spirit. The other option as you probably maybe you said this when i said what do you do how do you cope with things when something troubling comes up how do you cope with things the next thing is turning to someone who really knows you loves you and cares about you someone who you can count on right so again the core question is when something's troubling you and something troubling comes up how do you cope how do you come to the right solution 
And what are your internal or external resources? And maybe your external resource is turning to someone who really knows you, who loves you, who cares about you, and someone who you can count on. And maybe you just say, you know, I love that saying, do you want my advice? Or do you want me to just be ears and listen? I love that. So you can actually say to them, listen, I really am struggling with something. Can I can I just talk it out and you just listen? Or you could say, I'd be open to any advice because it seems like you're like a wizard in this area of life. And, you know, if you have any advice, that'd be great. Listen, we're all different. We approach life somewhat differently, right? But sometimes a good friend who really knows you and loves you and cares about you and can speak the truth to you, which, you know, sometimes we're caretaking our friends and we <laughs> don't really, you know, give them a half halt of, you know, so... It would be good if you had somebody in your corner that loves you that can talk to you in a kind way and say, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I hear what your problem is, and this is my advice. And then you can take it or leave it, right? Because that's their opinion. But I'm just saying, maybe there's someone that you could talk to. I remember, did I tell you this time when I went to my dear friend, Stephanie, and I was like, bawling about something going on in my life. And she was so good. Talk about boundaries. She goes, okay, Constance, this is a little beyond me. I think you need therapy. I think you should just go to a therapist for this specific issue. It won't take many times. Now, listen, she's, yeah, she's a doctor in young and psychology. So she knows. <laughs> so, and I'm a big fan of therapy. So sometimes maybe the person that you can turn to is a therapist. I'm saying you turn to yourself, you turn to spirit, or you turn to another person. Maybe these things, right? Or maybe you don't need that other person to talk it out with, or you know, maybe you want a little bit of a distraction because maybe you need to let whatever's bothering you simmer for a little bit. You know how when you would try to struggle, struggle with a work problem or a school problem back in the day, and you would like just really try and try and try to solve it. And you're like, I can't get it. I can't get it. And you just have to walk away for a while. You just walk away. And then while you're away, you come back to it. And all of a sudden the answer comes, or maybe while you're away, the answer comes, right? You just have to give it breathing space. So maybe when something troubling comes up, what you really need to do to cope is to go run with someone and laugh. Maybe you need to go have a fun time and just get a little bit of a break, right? And then you can come back. Don't run forever. You can't then, because then you might stay in that bitter place. Don't, don't stay away forever, but maybe then you can come back with a fresh approach and then find the answer yourself or whatnot. So it's really about, you know, who can you count on? You know, and wondering who can you count on when you're overwhelmed in your life or when you're, you have stuff coming up and you don't, you can't sort it on your own. Like, do you have someone that you could go to, to talk to, to help sort it, or just a friend or a spouse or a loved one or a sibling or whatnot, or a parent or whatever, you know, where do you go when you need help? I guess also I should ask you, do you actually seek help when you need it? Do you seek help when you need it? Now, why am I asking you all this stuff? I'm asking you this because this kind of shit closes down the heart petals. Bitterness closes you down. And then where's the love muffin? <laughs> that you're meant to be. Listen, life is ups and downs and heart petals open and close, open and close. But if you're on the spiritual journey of self-improvement and enlightenment and transformation and, you know, on the journey, and especially if you want to work with higher realms, you got to be willing to sort when things come up, when troubling things come up so that you don't stay in bitterness, that you can move towards betterness awareness, understanding, compassion, you know, and also to distance. I know people that come to me and they've been trying to sort it out with a sibling or a loved one or whatnot. And, you know, the answer really is this distance to just separate themselves because there's no resolution. There's no coming together. And I said that to you in the last session, just, you know, pray for them at a distance send them love at a distance. But that's the only way you can affect is through the ethers. 
So I think sometimes people have issue with politics or society at large or lawmakers or environmental concerns or whatnot, or people they have issue with, or, you know, just again, love them through the ethers for enlightenment and love and sign every petition you want to on your just causes and support in the ways that you can, but to recognize that we're here on a journey and some things are troubling, things are going to come up. And the goal is, is to not have it take you out, not have it have you remain bitter, right? And so I just think that that's important for you to remember. And I guess also I want to ask you, you know, who are you there for? Do you have friends that they know they can call on you and you'll be there for them without judgment, just holding the space when they crumble or holding the space as they express emotion and then helping them breathe and helping them through and then helping them regain their center and helping them better become better instead of stuck in bitterness. Yeah. So I had to laugh because I'm like spirit (laughs) when this topic came up and then they're like, just roll with it. Trust. I was like, yeah, but we're in the middle of the chakras. What are we, you know, what are we going into? But then it was this beautiful awareness of, yeah, we're in the chakras and we're in the heart pedals and we're not going to move on from the heart until we look at these things that can shut down the heart pedals. But also when we work with ourselves as an energy body, much like when I teach in my energy awareness classes and I teach people to scan the chakras and check the chakras for balance and imbalance or check the auric field for any disruptions. When we find these, you know, disgruntled energy or issues of anxiety or things that people are coping with in their life and not really, you know, working through, but things that are kind of stuck in their energy field, their auric field, their chakras that are holding them back from their full potential and happiness and peace of mind and, you know, health, personal health, mental, emotional, physical health. I teach them to ascertain if the disgruntled energy or the disrupted energy is from a past condition that they're coping with a past situation or a present situation or a future situation. So sometimes we have these things that we're trying to cope with and it then triggers anxieties or tensions in our energy field, our mental, our emotional, our physical fields. And they sometimes we're not even aware of them, right? Because they're maybe ancient past or family past, or we're carrying the burdens of ancestry or whatnot. or And so sometimes we're just constantly coping or on high alert anxiety because it's something in our past and it's not something we're really presently aware of. Or sometimes it is a present situation we're dealing with. Someone, you know, crosses our life and they disrupt it or have blowouts or upsets or whatever, or situations happen in our present reality. And the deal is to address those immediately. Take the breath, center yourself, figure out what do I want to do in this moment to respond accordingly to my needs and the situation and the truth of the situation. You know, maybe not my upset truth, but the entire truth, their perspective, my perspective, and what's going to make it a better situation and not have either of us step away in a bitterness or especially you in a bitterness. Or it could be that the stuff, the anxiety or the need to cope is coming from something that has yet to pass. It's something in your future, something that you're anticipating or having to deal with in your home life or your business life, your personal life, whatnot. And any of these things whether they're past, present, or future, I invite you to look at them. I invite you to look at them because otherwise when I put my hands on you and I sense it in your energy field, I'm like, okay, come on, you got to sort this. And I have to do it for myself also. So it's perfectly embedded in the lessons on the chakras because it'll affect them. You know, these will affect them. And especially depending on the topic at hand that you're coping with or you're dealing with or you're trying to work through, that will relate to the correlating chakra. You know, if it's a relationship issue, it might be gut issues. If it's a heart issue and love, you know, something that really has your 
heartbroken, it'll affect your heart chakra or your throat chakra speaking truth, which I promise you we're going to get to in a few more times. Because I want to talk to you about some other areas on your body before we go all the way up to the throat chakra. But this is why it's really important to recognize in your life, what are the things that you're coping with still? And, and maybe, maybe make a list. What are things from my past? my family upbringing or my youth or teachers or friends from my past that I'm still coping with, that I'm still trying to deal with, still trying to unravel? Or what are things that I'm coping with in my present life, in my personal or professional experience? Or what are things that I'm kind of have, you know, on, on my radar in my future that I'm like dealing with this aggro or tension or upset or, you know, disrupted energy. The goal again is to deal with them so that they don't settle in on your energy because when they settle in on your energy field and then it stews and stews and stews and makes you bitter, (laughs) it can cause further imbalances in your system to cause physical upset. And so the goal is to have any kind of challenges that come at you, see them as opportunity for growth, transformation, personal, spiritual, mental, emotional growth, and as an opportunity for a lesson learned. All right. This way, the world will be full of better people and not bitter people. (laughs) Won't that be great? We'll all be a part of that. We'll be all the better people instead of the bitter people. I think it's fabulous. (laughs) So I think I'll stop there. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been an honor to share with you. Hey, Constance Mesmer here. I just want to do a shout out of big thanks to all the members. I am so grateful. And all the people dropping in and giving little donations here and there and super thanks and all that stuff. I really appreciate you. You uh, members and you people contributing and subscribers are what help me bring this content to everyone, really. They both contribute to the cost of production, and I am definitely grateful for that. This stuff is not cheap to put out. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So every little bit helps, and I am um, filled with gratitude that you're stepping up. I am not necessarily a joiner, not usually, but there are environmental issues and other um, organizations that I do belong to and I contribute to because I like to see them persevere. And I'm hoping you feel the same about this work. I hope you put it into practice in your life. That's another way that you could spread this work um, and help change our world, which is what I think it ultimately does. As you know, I think if uh, everyone tuned into their soul senses, the world would be a much better place. So when you subscribe, it's a big yes vote for the content and it helps spread the work across the planet. So when you put the lessons into practice and subscribe and like and share. You help me help you carry the lesson beyond you and me. And I am just really grateful. Legally speaking, this podcast is presented solely for educational, spiritual, and entertainment purposes. It is not intended as a substitute for medical diagnosis, treatment, or the advice of a physician, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat a health problem or condition. Always check with your doctor. Thank you.